Hey, what's up? Mike, can you address Zaitsev's condition? Playing. How big of a boost is that for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge boost for him. Obviously, losing Poli, uh, you feel bad for the, the man and the kind of team media is and all that. Uh, nice to get Zaitsev back, and, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for him. Uh, you know, he's been a real good player for us all year. He's ultra competitive, moves the puck, you know, get on the penalty kill, get on the power play, so important guy for us. Mike, is, is there a challenge at all for him getting thrown back in after he hasn't had a full practice, uh, first NHL playoff games? No, I don't think so. We're going to find out, though. You and I will know at the same time. Mike, <laughs> having last change, is it more for you about the defensive matchup, getting the offensive matchups for you, or a combination of both? Well, I think, I think that helps, but in some ways, you don't want to get yourself in trouble by letting him run your bench. You want to do what's good for you, and you know it's pretty apparent by how he sends his guys out on Dave's own face-offs and O's own face-offs, you know, who he wants to play where. So. You know, we have to look at that, but we also have to get our people on the ice so it's the best for our situation. So we need some rhythm coming off our bench. Sometimes you get too carried away and get no rhythm. That's no good either. Mike, a follow-up to uh, just what you were talking about. Uh, what have you liked about the proficiency of a five-man group, a four-man group, and winning draws and, and getting possession initially? Well, obviously, it's an uh, it's important part of the game. I mean, I've, you know, it's easy to look at it and say we were better last game. Now, what happens is... is Two teams have an opportunity to respond, and often the team that uh, didn't like the way it went for them is the team that digs in the hardest. And we talked about yesterday on an off day is, is it's very important that we understand that we have to elevate and get to another level, set the ante here tonight, because last game doesn't matter anymore. We've got to get on with it. It's a best of five now. They, they've done a pretty good job of limiting Matthew's shots, but did it seem like he got maybe a little more comfortable as that game went on and, and overtime got more dangerous? Well, I thought him and Hyman and Nylander were real dangerous last game, and I thought Matty had some good looks. And so, uh, you know, it's just over time. But I think with all good players, you know, what I found uh, coaching good teams is sometimes in the first round you look at your stars and they have no points. Then they get seven in the next round, and they get 14 in the next round, and you never remember the first round. So that's what depth is all about, people picking one another up. There's not a lot of room in playoff time. So you have to be able to play without the puck because you never have the puck. Mike, uh, last uh, few years, the Raptors have pumped in live video of Jurassic Park into the dressing room before the games to kind of get guys fired up. Oh, yeah. Will you use that kind of tactic? No, Jurassic Park, I don't even know well, the yeah, song Well, Maple Leaf Square, so. right? Maple Leaf Square. <laughs> you know, uh, obviously, I. Th I think everybody on our team saw that and understands how big a deal it is here in Toronto. We walk around the community and have a real good feel for that. I think we're just going to focus on doing what we do. Um, we know how big the opportunity is. We earned it. And uh, we're going to do what we can to play right and have the right amount of emotional control. So we don't want to be too wired up either. Coach, in uh, game one, the Capitals' fourth line had a pretty big impact. In game two, it was your fourth line. What is it about playoff hockey that seems to bring the uh, the offensive abilities of fourth lines to the fore? Well, I think the, both groups just play simple, and you know, you end up firing it to the net, and it goes in for you. Boyle made a real good play, obviously, on the overtime goal, but the other ones have been more just about grinding and working hard. And uh, both teams have very capable guys playing on their fourth line or their third line or whichever way you want to write it on the sheet. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of space like we talked about. you got to compete hard to get space, and those guys are used to competing hard. Mike, would you expect to see as many power play opportunities on both sides tonight? Or? Well, I mean, game one obviously was way different than game two. That's the hardest thing about it is getting a feel for what's going to happen and making your adjustments court. We took two real bad penalties last game, and their power play is too good to take bad penalties. Uh, you know, we talked about that. Can't take bad penalties. You're going to take penalties once in a while. I understand that. Totally can't take bad ones. Ben Reams like some thrived in playoff atmospheres in the past. Have you seen him sort of different gear in his game over these last these first two? Well, it's the first time I've ever seen James in the playoffs, so I couldn't tell you much about that. Uh, you know, I think he's been good for us, and he's a big man. He's at the net, and that's where he scores goals in the playoffs. And he's got a real good touch. So uh, the harder he skates, the quicker he jumps. Uh, to me, it's all about him moving his legs. The more battles he wins, the more he has the puck, and the more effective he is. So uh, the rest just follows. When he has the puck, he's got to make good plays. You've got to have the puck, though. You've got to get it.